Business Traveler's Advisory is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental. For worldwide thrifty reservations, call 1-800-4-CARS. Good morning. I'm CNN meteorologist Valerie Voss. Two big storms to speak of today, one in the Midwest, the other one out across the Pacific Northwest. Here's your Business Traveler's Advisory now for Thursday, November 10th. In the east, heavy thunderstorms with strong gusty winds will create delays in Cincinnati this morning, while equipment problems create 35-minute delays in Dayton. Gusty winds and approaching thunderstorms will also cause delays in Pittsburgh. Look for delays with heavy traffic and possible thunder showers later today in Atlanta. For the Midwest, Chicago airports are reporting 45-minute delays in heavy traffic and possible thunder showers this morning. And in the West, reduced visibilities in drizzle and fog may delay San Francisco travelers as the morning progresses. It's just about 7 a.m. in the East, 6 Central. A complete weather update, all the news and sports, just ahead on CNN's Daybreak. When you rent from some car companies these days, you can really get soaked. That's why I'm ecstatic about thrifty car rent. Their rates are new Chrysler cars certainly won't murder your wallet. Enjoy luxury and savings. The all-new Chrysler New Yorker, just $34.95 a day at thrifty. No advance reservation required. Call thrifty. They're thrifty price for everyone. Oh, and call me for dry cleaning. This is CNN, a network of Turner Broadcasting Systems. An oil tanker breaks in two and burns in the North Atlantic. The nation's B-1 bomber force is grounded until it passes inspection. An earthquake rattles a wide area of California. This is Daybreak on CNN for Thursday, November 10th. Today, a Liberian-registered oil tanker with a crew of 27 has broken in two in the North Atlantic, and the seas in the area are burning. A Russian weather ship is on the scene now, some 900 miles off Canada, where the tanker Odyssey is wallowing in heavy seas. Planes flying over say there are fires on the seas now. The Odyssey was en route to Canada from the Shetland Islands in Scotland. No indication of what has happened to the 27-man crew or its nationality. John Mitchell, President Nixon's attorney general who went to prison for his role in the Watergate scandal, died yesterday of a heart attack on the streets of Georgetown. He was 75. Mitchell collapsed while walking near his Washington, D.C. home in Georgetown. Mitchell had been convicted in 1975 of perjury and conspiring to cover up the White House involvement in the Watergate scandal. He served 19 months of a two to eight year prison term. Mitchell was Richard Nixon's law partner in New York City was considered to be the former president's closest friend and advisor. The former Nixon speechwriter Pat Buchanan described Mitchell as intensely loyal to Nixon. There was no, no breach, personal breach that I know of between the, uh, the two of them. Uh, uh, as I say, John Mitchell uh, uh, took his medicine like a real man in that, uh, that event back there 15 years ago. John Mitchell had directed President Nixon's re-election bid in 1972. The Air Force says a few B-1 bombers remain on alert this morning, ready to take off in the event of a nuclear war. But the rest are grounded, awaiting inspections ordered after one of the long-range craft crashed Tuesday in Texas. CNN's military affairs correspondent Carl Rochelle reports. The Air Force does not yet know what caused the fire in the B-1B that crashed Tuesday near Dias Air Force Base, Texas, but it is temporarily grounding all 98 remaining B-1B bombers for a safety inspection. Officials say the inspection will concentrate on electrical, hydraulic, and fuel lines and will take about three hours per aircraft. Each plane will be returned to service following inspection. There are often problems with new aircraft, but the B-1B seems to be having more than its share. Just two weeks ago, a general accounting office study reported serious maintenance problems with the B-1 kept it on the ground more than half of the time it should have been flying. The first crash of a B-1B came in September of 1987, when a low-level practice bombing mission struck a Pelican. Three of the six-man crew perished in that accident. The Air Force says despite the grounding, it could fly the B-1s in an emergency. It will be working 24 hours a day and hopes to get all 98 aircraft inspected and back in the air within two to three days. But like past B-1 incidents, 
This one is likely to receive close scrutiny from the new Congress when it goes into session in January. Carl Rochelle, CNN, the Pentagon. People around the world last night marked the 50th anniversary of Kristallnacht, the night historians say the Holocaust began. In West Germany, the main observance at a Frankfurt synagogue was interrupted briefly when Chancellor Helmut Kohl addressed the audience as, my dear Jewish fellow citizens. Protesters shouted, we're citizens, not Jewish fellow citizens. In West Berlin, in Vienna, in cities in this country, people marched to mark the night in pre-war Germany when the Nazis burned synagogues, vandalized Jewish businesses, and sent thousands, tens of thousands, to concentration camps. A universal theme of the Kristallnacht anniversary is never again, never forget. What the response of the Jewish people has been after the Holocaust has been really to say that for every synagogue destroyed, we'll build another one, and for every scroll of the law that's been vandalized, we'll write another one. And for every one of the one and a half million children that were killed, uh, we will give birth to other children who we will raise and educate to be Jews. Crystal Night, or Night of Broken Glass, 50 years ago, November 9th, 1938. The U.S. Energy Department this morning reveals the probable site for its Super Collider, the world's largest atom smasher. The nearly four and a half billion dollar project is expected to create thousands of new jobs and generate a billion dollars in related contracts to the host state. Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Michigan, North Carolina, Texas and Tennessee are the seven states being considered for the site. Those states have spent years and millions of dollars on campaigns to win the project. The Super Collider will aid research into the nature of energy and matter. A moderate earthquake shook a wide area of northern and central California last night. It broke windows, knocked goods off store shelves, but there are no reports of injury or serious damage. The quake measured somewhere between 4.5 and 4.7 on the open-ended Richter scale and was centered about 11 miles northeast of San Jose on the Calaveras Fault. That is the same area where quake measuring 5 on the Richter scale hit last June. Authorities say this latest quake was felt over an area about 300 miles long and 100 miles across. It's five and a half minutes now past the hour. Coming up on Daybreak, we'll take a look at some strange happenings in the world of sports and tell you about the political changes in Washington, D.C. But first, let's check with CNN meteorologist Valerie Voss for a look at the nation's weather. Morning, Val. Good morning, Marianne. Not much change temperature-wise around the country, although there is a big change a couple of weather systems we'll be talking about. 40s across northern Maine, 30s across the upper Mississippi River Valley, the Dakotas through Minnesota into Wisconsin and Michigan. A few 30s in the forecast across northern Idaho and Montana. 40s across much of the west, uh, except for western sections of Washington and Oregon. They will go into the 50s today. We'll also see 50s down into northern California, 60s along all of the coastal regions of California and central California, 50s and 60s into the southern plain states today in the texas panhandle that's cooler than it has been and look for 60s and 70s across much of the ohio valley and the mid-atlantic ahead of the cold front that is bringing stormy weather to that region uh, that area of 70s across kentucky tennessee will occur earlier in the day as cooler air moves in behind the frontal system it'll be another mild day around the gulf of mexico 80s in the forecast through that region a few 90s will remain over the texas rio grande valley although temperatures are cooling off across texas which means there won't be as many record high temperatures broken out that way today as yesterday. Look for 70s and 80s across Southern California and the desert southwest. Here's our forecast weather map now later in the day. A strong frontal system is moving through Washington and Oregon this morning. It'll move to the Rockies by later on today. The northeast mountains of Oregon above uh, 4,000 feet expecting about four inches of snow. Four to six in the forecast for the Cascades, Siskiyous, Mount Shasta, also the Lake Tahoe region of California. Snow advisories in effect across all of those regions. The snow levels at Lake Tahoe about 6,000 feet. As that frontal system moves into the Rocky Mountains. It'll bring strong gusty winds with it and produce some snow. Snow advisories go into effect later today across some mountain regions in Wyoming and Colorado. Our frontal system in the east produced very stormy weather from Kansas and Oklahoma into Indiana and Ohio last night and overnight as it continues to move eastward. Rain showers and thunderstorms expected with it. Also very strong and gusty winds. There are high wind warnings in effect for western New York with winds expected 35 to 45 miles an hour and a flash flood watch is in effect across southern lower Michigan. Michigan this morning for some heavy rains that have been falling in that area. Farther north in the northern sections of lower Michigan and the upper peninsula, we're expecting snow six to ten inches. Here's your forecast now for some cities that we hope are close to you.
We'll be back to update your weather in an hour's time. Daybreak will be back after these messages. With Radio Shack's new portable cellular phone, a price and technology breakthrough. You got the whole world in your hand. Only at Radio Shack, the technology store. So you called Colger? Huh? Yeah, I called Colger. We got the same lease here we got in Richmond and San Antonio. You're kidding. Simple five pager. No surprises. You pay for what you use. Maintenance. Full time, on site, like that. Get this. I got 50 people. 50 parking spaces right outside. If you're considering office space, call Cougar. Across America, the one address that means business. I'm a seven iron from the office. <laughs> uh, maybe a six. Easy six. To keep your business performing. Hello? We've lost some music. Conica fax machines deliver on the spot. When overnight just won't do. Conica facsimile saves the day. Now, they too have seen it. A dog food with a look and taste like no other. King Cuts. Tender cuts made with luscious lean meat. Dogs just go nuts for. King Cuts. The king of all dog foods. King Cuts. This is Howard Johnson today. If I make this shot, you watch my show. This week in the NBA, Sunday at 6 Eastern on CNN. See you Sunday. Ted Turner's Superstation, TBS, premiered a computer-colorized version of the classic movie Casablanca last night. Say, who's got trouble? How much trouble? Someone. Well, now, don't you bow. Just knuckle down and knock on wood. Who's unhappy? We're unhappy. How unhappy? Who's unhappy? Uh-oh, that won't do. When you are blue, just knock on wood. Who's unhappy? Well, the Director's Guild is unhappy and doesn't seem satisfied with just knocking on wood. The Guild calls the colorization a, quote, computerized assault on one of history's greatest films. The group says viewers should be aware the color movie is a, quote, parody of the original classic. In the past, Ted Turner has said that since he owns the films he's had colorized, he can do what he wants with them. Just how happy. Very happy. Hey. <laughs> if you check your monitors, that's clearly an idea that's catching on. Mm, it's certain. Television news director. He, sign he signs our paychecks. He can do whatever he wishes. Here we are. This is a black... Glorious... Oh, it is blue. Morning, Jim. Thank you. <clears throat> You're back. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is, we've known all along. We hire a new president and the market goes down. We should have known right away Wednesday wasn't going to be one of your average normal 12-point victories. I mean, for instance, Cotton Fitzsimmons coaches the NBA Phoenix Suns won last night for the first time this season. It was his 98th victory as a Phoenix coach the 97th. 16 years ago, this is his second term with a generation off in between. Buffalo Sabres, meantime, took 12 shots on goal last night in the whole game. A club record low. Teams take 12 in one period, most games. But Buffalo scored on three of those 12 and won the game 3-2. Meanwhile, in Salt Lake City, Sacramento's Rodney McRae, known as a pretty good shooter around the NBA. He tied an NBA record last night when he took 15 shots and missed every single one of them. He has hit on just five of 31 shots this year. He's in a bit of a slump. Meanwhile, in suburban Detroit, the Pistons beat the Hawks in overtime for one very simple reason. Their bench outscored Atlanta's 46 to 11. In years past, it has been the Atlanta bench that has helped carry the Hawks. The Pistons, who remain unbeaten now at 4-0, turned that their way last night. In Boston Garden, before the 373rd consecutive sellout, Michael Jordan put on a show worthy of that. Scored 52 points, but perhaps even more incredible, 
He had nine steals, just too shy of the all-time NBA record. People overlook his defense, and he loves it when they do that. Larry Bird, on the other hand, or foot, is hurting, and there is talk of surgery on his painful Achilles tendon that would keep him out of action up to three months. Club wants to have it done now. He wants to wait till the season's over, saying it would hurt worse sitting watching other guys doing his job. We talked on Monday of the painful expression on 49er coach Bill Walsh's face after that 24-23 loss in Phoenix. We figured the pain came from defeat. Instead, it came from the ribs. He was hit on the sidelines during a punt return. May have fractured some ribs. Nothing, he says, that will keep him from work, though. And in the Meadowlands, the story of a guy who just would not learn his lessons, New Jersey's John McClain, in all alone on Edmonton goaltender Grant Fuhr three times in this game. And every time he shot high. That's the book on Fuhr, apparently. But each time, Fuhr robbed him. The Devils, two goals, both low along the ice. Edmonton won by one in overtime. McClain would kick himself, but he has finally learned to keep his shots low. Let's roll through all the rest of a very strange Wednesday in sports. Sports next hour, including a commentary on the coaching overload. I'm Jim Huber, and the news continues right after this. Sports update brought to you by Tempstar, the newest name in home heating and cooling. You can rely on the star. American ingenuity is finding a simple way to do a job well. At Tempstar, we applied our ingenuity to home heating. We invented a furnace that's 95.8% efficient. The ingenious part is that the technology is simple, proven reliable. Two heat exchangers instead of one, backed by a limited lifetime warranty. The Tempstar Gas Furnace, brought to you by your Tempstar dealer. I think the risk of being injured is higher in skiing than it is in many other sports. We were going down into the trees, and as we were cutting in, we'd all gotten our skis tangled up together, and that's when I'd fallen and really hurt my back. So they brought me over to the emergency room at the hospital. The doctors had given me some Tylenol to help the pain. Robert Koss trusts Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. It worked uh, when I needed it the most. Now try new gelatin-coated gel caps, only from Tylenol. The gone fishing sign will hang on the door to George Bush's office this weekend. The president-to-be begins a four-day vacation in Florida this afternoon resting up after the long campaign and considering the makeup of his administration. Bush was welcomed at the White House yesterday by President Reagan. Before arriving, Bush announced that he's going to nominate his campaign chairman, James Baker, to become the new Secretary of State. Bush said the other cabinet appointments will be announced soon, but not until after the trip to Florida. He said he'll use the transition period to set priorities for the first 100 days in office. Having lost his bid for the Oval Office, Michael Dukakis returned to the governor's office in Boston. Dukakis said yesterday he gave it his best shot and was ready to put the presidential campaign behind him. He claimed, though, it was a campaign which had distorted his record and a campaign which, quote, may set a standard we live to regret. But he said he felt no bitterness toward George Bush and he will do whatever he can to help the new administration. Senator Lowell Weicker of Connecticut acknowledged the end to 18 years in the Senate in an emotional concession speech. That race between Weicker and Democrat Joseph Lieberman was so close that Weicker had refused to concede on election night. But yesterday, the liberal Republican said the results gave a clear mandate to his conservative Democratic opponent. Weicker vowed to retire from politics, saying it's simply time to walk off that field with no regrets, no griping. Thank you. Connecticut for giving me opportunities that any other person would dream of. And goodbye. Weicker was well known in the Senate for his political independence. 
Nobody is conceding in the Florida Senate race. That race is so close, it is depending, is pegged right now on absentee ballots and may eventually require a recount. Republican Connie Mack is ahead right now by just about 3,000 votes. Mack says he is confident of victory. He says many absentee ballots are from areas where he did well. Democrat Buddy McKay sounds less confident, but he's also waiting on the final results. The men are competing for a seat left open by retiring Democrat Lawton Childs. A new talk show in Rochester, New York, is redefining the term talk show. Donald Lacey reports. A wave of the hands and Hey Listen signs on to the airwaves. One of the first shows in the country to cater to the deaf community. It is said to be the only deaf talk show with a live studio audience. And most of them are deaf. Even the show's hostess, Jackie Schertz, is deaf. When did that really strike you? But the show is not only for the hearing impaired. It is to build some understanding between them and the hearing world. This is a very good education for hearing people because they can learn more about deafness. It encourages a, a feeling of self-esteem among the deaf community. Producer Arden Colston conceived this idea, a talk show for the deaf. With one of the largest deaf populations in the country, Rochester was ripe for it. Colston had the personal background for it. Well, it was personal because uh, I am a son of deaf parents, and I see issues like this that we talk about brought up in family situations um, for a long time. A Listen is much like the popular large-scale talk shows that preceded it, but during the break, there isn't a whole lot of noisy chatter in the audience, and audience members can also talk during taping. But this audience has never been able to identify so well with the program. It really gets us deaf people to be more uh, in touch with what's going on in our own community and the hearing community also. It's a good way to promote and encourage deaf people and hearing people to understand the feelings of deaf people. Donna Lacey, Rochester, New York. Looking Up is brought to you by Lipton Recipe Soup Mixes. We give you days and days of delicious ideas. When you cook with Lipton, you dish up surprises every day. Lipton Recipe Soup Mix gives a new twist to all your family's old favorites. From dips to dinners, Lipton's special seasonings make a difference. With Lipton Recipe Soup Mix, you can turn any dish into a new idea. So what's cooking? Surprise! There's money to be made in old movie cartoons. We'll look at animated art as an investment. That's on Business Day, coming up next, 7.30 a.m. Eastern. You've got the magic touch. Ooh, it makes me glow so much. Ooh, it casts the spell. On your next business trip, feel the Hyatt Touch. The Magic Touch. Why would anyone feed a little baby a grown-up food he may not be ready for? <laughs> it's a good question, even for this baby. Instead of adult dog food, feed him puppy food. Purina Puppy Chow brand puppy food. Puppy Chow gives puppies the extra nutrition they need. Special nutrition for a puppy's growing body. Babies need baby food. Both babies do. Doesn't your baby deserve Puppy Chow? America's leading consumer products rating service says one battery. Megatron 34 from Interstate tested best. It ran circles around better known brands and won by a mile. Megatron 34 from Interstate. Ask for it. If you could fix oatmeal with no pot and no mess, would you? You can, you know. Right in the bowl, right in the microwave. In 90 seconds. Quaker Oats. It's the right thing to do. Whether you're raking it in or just trying to make it grow, watch CNN's Money Line at 7 Eastern. Money Line, a safe bet when you're serious about your money. We are currently suffering from the inertia of the 70s. Uh, law enforcement is trying to catch up 
with a very severe problem generated by our love affair with drugs in the 70s. As head of the Drug Enforcement Agency, John Lawn is trying to reverse what he calls a permissive attitude toward drugs. Lawn says a related problem is that this is a nation in a hurry. We are a society used to uh, instant gratification. Uh, we are a society that if, if we find something is onerous or unpleasant for us, uh, we want uh, an instant fix. Lawn says the DEA is getting cooperation from source countries, especially in Latin America, in cutting the drug supply. He points to such cooperative projects as Operation Blast Furnace in 1986, when the United States Army provided transport for Bolivian troops raiding coca fields. But he adds drug dealers are both ruthless and resourceful. If we were to build a 10-foot wall around the country, the traffickers would distribute 12-foot ladders. Lawn says the real answer lies at home, in the willingness to lessen the demand for illegal drugs. That means education, and it means effective law enforcement at home. I have said very often that we should point the finger in the morning when we're shaving, because it's not Colombia's fault, it's not Peru's fault or Mexico's fault, that we have this seeming insatiable appetite for drugs. The DEA currently has 2,800 agents, of whom 10% are stationed in 44 foreign countries. As for himself, Lawn is guardedly optimistic about the future. We are having successes on the enforcement side. We are having successes on the demand reduction side, that is drug education. But I think the issue still remains in doubt. John Lawn, a profile in government. I'm Bob Waller, CNN reporting. Profiles in Government is brought to you by Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Ask every American the meaning of success, and you won't hear the same answer twice. Whatever your idea of succeeding, Citicorp and Citibank can help. With Citibank MasterCard and Visa cards, Citicorp Savings, Diners Club, and Citicorp Mortgage. We also serve millions of customers in every major marketplace worldwide. Citicorp, because Americans want to succeed, not just survive. Canadians go to the polls in 11 days, and a new survey suggests the race is much tighter than was first thought. The poll of nearly 1,300 people shows the Liberal Party, led by John Turner, has the edge with 37% of decided voters. But Prime Minister Brian Mulroney's Conservatives are close behind with 35%. The results of the Environics Research Group polls suggest the race is much closer than was indicated by a Gallup poll released on Monday. That Gallup poll gave the Liberals a 12-point lead. After a long bargaining session Tuesday night, the Canadian government has agreed in principle to give about 6,500 Indians in Canada compensation and ownership of about 1,600 square miles of land in the Yukon. Whit Fraser reports on the agreement that Indians say will allow them to retain age-old title to their land. The pressure of the federal election may have something to do with it. Cramming more than 20 people into a small hotel room for eight hours may also be a factor. But after 15 years, there is an agreement on land claims in the Yukon and Yukon Indians have never felt better about their future. When we speak, or when we participate in Yukon life, people will not take us for granted anymore. And we will, they will realize that we do have a stake in the territory, and that we are a group to, to be listened to, a group to be dealt with. I think a land claim settlement here in the Yukon means that we move into a new era of opportunity, equality, and uh, mutual respect between the two basic cultures in this community. Right in Whitehorse, you can see what a land settlement will mean. Yukon Indians have been at the very bottom of the economic scale. Recently, that standard of living has been improving. The local Indian band is developing a new community with modern housing. It's creating jobs for Native people. Across the territory, Indian bands say with $230 million over 15 years that an agreement will bring, there will be more projects like this and better living conditions for all Native people. The deal has also meant that Yukon Indians will have to surrender their aboriginal claim that once covered nearly all of the territory. That will satisfy many of the non-native population who pressured Ottawa to settle the claim so development of the Yukon can go ahead. Not only will there be land for the beneficiaries of the agreement, there will be land for all Yukoners, and I believe that's a very important step. Like the Dene Métis claim signed in the Northwest Territories two months ago, this is a framework agreement. 
there are still long negotiations ahead selecting the land and working out the degree of self-government Native people will have over their communities. But the consensus is the hard part has been done and everybody, including Indian Affairs Minister Bill McKnight, agrees that not even a change of government on November 21st will detract from that. Whit Fraser, CBC News, Whitehorse. That's our report for now. A news update in about 15 minutes and more daybreak at the top of the hour. I'm Marianne Laughlin. I'm Bob Kane. Bill Hartley next with Business Day. Hey, who's got trouble? We got trouble. How much trouble? So much trouble. Well, now, don't you bow. Just knuckle down and knock on wood. You know, hardly any of this stuff can really help me with my schoolwork. There is something you could have which would help you a lot. Do you know what that is? No, but I'm afraid you're going to tell me. Uh, yes. It's the new Encyclopedia Britannica. Encyclopedia Britannica. Now you tell me. I've got a report due tomorrow. On what? On the exploration of space. Take a look at this. From the first beeps of Sputnik to the triumph of the Apollo moon landing. All right. Well, since this has turned out to be a Britannica commercial, I guess you're going to tell me how somebody could get us that. Actually, I thought I might, yeah. And I suppose you're going to throw one of those 800 numbers up on the screen. Am I right? Might as well. And there it is. To find out how you can own the Encyclopedia Britannica, just call this toll-free number and we'll send you this free booklet telling you everything you need to know about your key to the information age. And just for previewing Britannica in your home, your family will receive this three-volume desk reference set. So if you would be interested in owning the new Britannica... I'm thinking it over. Just call this number now, Encyclopedia Britannica. This is CNN, a network of Turner Broadcasting System. Live from the world's financial capital, New York City, this is Business Day with Bill Hartley for Thursday, November 10th, 1988. Good morning. The currency markets now seem to be coming used to George Bush. The dollar is steadying to slightly down this morning after a dizzying fall in New York yesterday. Markets had been expecting, even wanting, a Bush victory, but when it came, coming with it were nagging doubts. The Bush administration will not be able to do much to cut the twin trade and budget deficits. Then a Bush advisor and former White House aide, Martin Feldstein, tipped over the barrel, calling for a lower dollar. So just to stand still in terms of competitiveness with Japan, the dollar has to come down by 55 to 6% this year. With Germany, about 3.5%. So looking out over the next three years, we have to have at least a 10% decline in the value of the dollar. Well, that remark sent the greenback plunging. Then speculation the Federal Reserve might raise interest rates to stabilize the economy. And some strong evidence the Fed and the Bank of Japan were in the markets buying dollars firmed the currency. Here's where the greenback stands right now in European trading. It is down slightly against the Japanese yen just below the 124 level. The dollar is weaker against the West German mark, about a third of a pfennig. Lower against the pound sterling, a dollar seventy nine and a half cents. A dollar also down against the Swiss and French francs, and trading at lower levels against the Canadian dollar. Trading in the credit markets, quiet. U.S. thirty-year Treasury bond is off just one tick right now, and it yields exactly nine percent. Despite concern about rising rates, yields actually fell at the latest Treasury auction. Yields on the nine and a half billion dollars of ten-year notes dropped, uh, sold yesterday, dropped to their lowest level since February, 8.94%. That's down from 9.27% in the last auction. Government normally would be auctioning 30-year bonds today, but a bill authorizing their issue has not yet been signed by President Reagan. Instead, the Treasury will auction $11 billion in 37-day cash management bills. An unanswered question from Tuesday's election, who will replace Representative Fernand St. Germain? the defeated Rhode Island Democrat who chairs the House Banking Committee. That is a job some consider the most important in the 101st Congress. Deborah Marchini reports from Washington. Amount of the House Banking Committee will play a key role in the multi-billion dollar cleanup of the savings and loan industry. The fall of Congressman Fernand St. Germain leaves the chairman's seat vacant. First in line for that seat is Texas Democrat Henry Gonzalez. 
His state is the hardest hit by the thrift crisis, and he's been concerned that regulators aren't doing enough to fix it. Gonzalez has also criticized the Congress and the SNLs for their part in the crisis. The Congress, with the best of intentions, provided the opportunity for this uh, scandal and the downfall of the SNL industry because of the high flyers and the speculators that were able and enabled to speculate with the insurance fund money. Gonzalez has proposed paying for the sins of those high flyers with a $50 billion loan from the Treasury, paid for by the industry and its customers. The industry has said it can't bear any more of the cost, but by and large it likes Gonzalez, saying he's voted with the SNLs more often than against them. Most House Banking Committee members indicated they won't challenge Gonzalez for the post of chairman, but one hinted he might. A spokesman for New York Democrat John LaFalfe says the congressman is taking a hard, serious look at the situation, saying the post could very well be the most important job in the 101st Congress. Deborah Marchini, CNN Business News, Washington. International stock markets are stabilizing today. Earlier this week in London, the uh, London Stock Exchange swung wildly up and down, but today the Financial Times 100 share index virtually unchanged the index up just eight-tenths of a point. On the continent, the Paris bourses gained a quarter of a percent, the West German market down by one and a half percent. In Tokyo overnight, similar story, Nikkei average edging lower, down by 46 and one-third points. The first criminal charges have been filed in Japan's widening insider trading scandal. A former senior official of the Recruit Cosmos real estate firm has been charged with bribing a politician to soften his questioning about scandal in Parliament. The Japanese Prime Minister and the Finance Minister have been implicated in the scandal. Their former secretaries were among those who purchased Recruit Cosmos shares before they were sold on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. The battle for control of RJR Nabisco is escalating. Forceman little partner Theodore Forceman sent a letter to Shearson Lehman Hutton accusing that firm of trying to derail a potential Forceman bid for RJR. The letter came in response to one sent by Shearson CEO Peter Cohen. Cohen said Forceman broke a promise not to pursue a bid for RJR. Well, in his letter, Forceman also criticized Shearson's joint proposal with management to acquire the food and tobacco maker. A battle of letters. Grand Metropolitan says Pillsbury shareholders have tendered nearly three quarters of their stock to the British spirits maker. But Pillsbury still clutching its poison pill in hopes of staving off Grand Met. The pill prevents Grand Met from accepting any of that tendered stock. Grand Met has extended its $60 a share. That's a five and a quarter billion dollar offer for Pillsbury until this issue is resolved. Shareholder class action suit will be presented in court today to overturn the pill or at least force Pillsbury into negotiations with Grand Met. GTE will cut almost 7,000 jobs from its telephone division over the next four years. Reductions, part of an announced restructuring plan, will shave off about 8% of the company's domestic workforce. Most of the cuts will take place in middle management. GTE says the savings generated from the layoffs will lead to rate reductions for GTE customers. U.S. stocks in London turning in a mixed performance this morning as investors remain on edge from the dollar's jittery behavior. Amex up a half a point. The metals company says it will earn $8 a share this year, although much of that is reflected in one-time gains. Other gold stocks attracting interest as a result of the Amex rise, Echo Bay Mines and Homestake Mining each gaining an eighth. IBM off an eighth. Texas Instruments picking up an eighth. That's in anticipation of good news today coming out of an analyst meeting. You remember the cartoons you watched from darkened theater balconies so many years ago? Well, today, one frame of those is worth thousands of dollars. We'll talk about investing in animated art when Business Day returns. Comprehensive health services and protection at an affordable cost. That's what one of America's strongest insurance, financial, and health service experts offers you. All backed by 52 years of health service expertise that covers over 8 million Americans. It's one of the most dramatic developments in health care today. From the travelers, you're better off under the umbrella. Pitney Bowes now offers a complete line of copiers. If you'd like one, just fax us a purchase order. You don't have a fax machine? We have them too. Just send us a purchase order through your mailing machine. You don't have a mailing machine? 
This is your executive section. Executive section? This is your welcoming gift. Welcoming gift? This is your newly decorated room. This is Howard Johnson? Uh-huh. Howard Johnson. <laughs> a federal grand jury indicted Drexel Burnham Lambert assistant trader Lisa Jones on eight counts of perjury and obstruction of justice. Jones is accused of lying during grand jury testimony in the government's investigation of Princeton Newport Partners. Last summer, Drexel trader Bruce Newberg, with whom Jones worked, was indicted on racketeering charges for executing false trades for tax benefit purposes. If convicted, Jones faces a maximum penalty of five years in prison and a fine of a quarter million dollars for each count. Two companies reaching settlements with customers this morning. Chubb will pay $48 million to farmers who sued this summer when their drought insurance was denied, and discount broker Charles Schwab taking a $2.5 million charge to cover refunds to customers it had used their securities without authorization. Wall Street didn't exactly welcome George Bush with open arms. His victory had been expected for so long, the market went on to other concerns, deficits, and economic problems. Then a suggestion by Senate Republican leader Robert Dole that Congress eliminate interest deductions for loans used in corporate buyouts knocked out what few underpinnings remained in the market. By the close, the Dow Industrial Average had lost nine and a quarter. We start today at 2118 and a quarter. Moderate volume with 153 million shares. Trading declines knocked down advancing issues by a two to one margin, sending the New York Stock Exchange composite down nearly a point. The American Stock Exchange Index fell three-quarters of a point, and the over-the-counter NASDAQ composite dropped one and a tenth. From time to time on Business Day, we turn to ways to make money through investments in uh, somewhat unorthodox items. Today, we are going to look at animated art, frames from cartoons you cheered on in movie theaters when you were a kid. At least I did. My guest this morning is Joshua Arfer. He is from Christie's, where an auction today will sell some 280 pieces of animated art. Joshua, welcome to Business Day. Good morning. Well, okay, now first of all, let's figure, can I have that one? Oh. What exactly are these? I mean, that's sure that's Mickey, but what exactly is it? Well, they are original hand-painted celluloids uh, used in the original film. They're, they're painted in gouache, which is a type of watercolor from reverse, and then shot over a watercolor master background. So this is just one frame of a cartoon? Uh, this is one of 1,400 original celluloids that make up one minute of film. 1,400 in one minute? That's correct. All right. The value of, of these items, how, how do you tell what's valuable? Uh, certainly what's cute, what's rare, and uh, the celluloids that we have that are, are actually from uh, very important productions. Okay, uh, this is another Mickey Mouse. What makes this one this so This is unusual? a very early Mickey Mouse. It predates Mickey's first color appearance. Uh, they are uh, some of the, the best works, uh, especially early Mickey, uh, because they are, as far as we know, only a handful of the original celluloids still around, paired with a master background. Uh, it certainly shows Mickey in his uh, most famous pose. He hasn't changed much, has he? Uh, no, he hasn't. This, He's this sort is of developed. early 30s, you say? Uh, this is 1934. Huh, fascinating. Who buys? Who buys? Uh, who buys? Uh, it ranges many different collectors. There are those who have been collecting Disney art from the start. There are sort of a host of celebrities out there who certainly are collectors. People who uh, basically want to own a, a small part of their childhood, films that, that may, meant a lot to them growing up, uh, numbers of generations from 50-year-olds to 20-year-olds. And what kind of a value would you assign to these? Uh, certainly because they're rare and we look for those pe uh, pieces that are vintage from the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s, uh, they can uh, range anywhere from uh, fifteen hundred dollars to fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand. What would certainly. be worth fifty thousand? Uh, certainly the black and white piece that you this, saw. This Mickey one. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Now we were doing Disney, but let's let's right. take another uh, another one here. Here's here's a friend for all. all right. We that, all know him. That's a very rare Fleischer Superman piece. Fleischer meaning? Uh, Fleischer Studios. Uh huh. Uh, this is uh, one of the only uh, uh, celluloids we know of Superman. Uh, it's certainly very rare. Fleischer is the studios that created Betty Boop. <laughs> I noticed an affidavit on the back of this saying that it was done in, in uh, 1940-41. That's correct. But these were done by studios. That's correct. Uh, presumably Walt Disney owned these, these, uh, these items. How did they get over the years from the studio into Christie's? Uh, well, certainly I believe that, that Walt Disney and a number of other people really felt that the final film 
was uh, the only thing that one should be concerned with. Many celluloids were either given away or sold through licensees uh, back in the early 40s. Uh, people mainly collected them for their children's room or just because they loved a particular character. Were, were these sometimes, in some cases, literally thrown, thrown out? Uh, many were given away, many uh, were taken home to work on, many uh, people uh, from the studios tell us there were piles of celluloids just near garbage dumps waiting wow. for the picking. What about modern cartoons? Are these going to be uh, valuable, or are, there, or is the techniques different today? Uh, well, I think with the knowledge that the technique will be different with the invention of computerized animation now, I think any celluloid uh, down the line can certainly uh, rank up there. As, as pieces become uh, far out of the range of the, uh, the little investor, uh, certainly uh, people <laughs> piece should sign. of computer tape. Right. <laughs> okay, uh, or, uh, Joshua, Joshua, thanks very much for joining it's us on Business Day. It's been a pleasure. Day. And you. Business Day continues in just a moment. I'm in the room of a national motel chain. Tell me, why would anybody stay here when there's a clean, comfortable red roof inn right up the road? Hey! What are you staying here for? Red Roof Inns has rooms every bit as nice as this for about $30 less. Uh, you know, it's funny. It's the same thing the guy in 302 said. Want a room for about half the cost? Hit the roof. Red Roof Inns. Call 1-800-THE-ROOF. I'll see myself out. Being a Mercury, Topaz not only knows how to hold people, but also how to hold the road. It's a car that unites comfort and control. Picture yourself in a Mercury, where comfort and control are one. What do you take for diarrhea? Oh, the old standby. If you're like most people, lots and lots of the old standby. Well, now there's something more advanced. Introducing Imodium AD with a medicine now available without a prescription. So Imodium AD can often stop diarrhea with just one dose instead of all the spoonfuls you may need of the leading remedy. One dose of Imodium AD. It can make your first attack of diarrhea your last. If I make this shot, you watch my show. This week in the NBA, Sunday at 6 Eastern on CNN. See you Sunday. Now for a look at this week's top performing mutual funds. Our numbers come from Lipper Analytical Services, and these are funds tracked during the last 12 months. Columbia Special, three weeks in a row, turning in the best showing in the capital appreci appreciation sector. Columbia Special up 48%. The group average rose almost 13 and a half. Mutual shares regains the number one seed with a gain of nearly 34% in growth and income. The group average posted a 14.5% jump. Executive investment, high yield, maintains its lead in the fixed income area, up about 22.5%. That's better than twice the group average. And Templeton Global One also wins again in the global arena, rising nearly 30%. The group average up 16 and three quarters. It is now 14 minutes to the hour. Let's go to Reed Collins in Washington for the latest news headlines. Morning, Bill. There's a disaster in the North Atlantic this morning. The Liberian flag tanker Odyssey broke in half in stormy seas about 900 miles off Newfoundland. The British Coast Guard says the ocean's surface around the stricken vessel is burning because of spilled oil. No word yet on the fate of the 27-man crew. The Air Force has grounded its fleet of advanced B-1B bombers for inspection. That move coming after the fiery crash of one B-1B on Tuesday in West Texas. Pentagon officials say the inspections will focus on the electrical, the hydraulic, and the fuel line systems. John Mitchell, the Attorney General in the Nixon administration who went to jail for his role in Watergate, has died at the age 75. Mitchell collapsed of a heart attack yesterday afternoon in Washington's Georgetown section. He was pronounced dead shortly after that at a Washington hospital. George and Barbara Bush went up to look at the new place yesterday under the gracious guidance of the current residents, Ronald and Nancy Reagan, soon to leave themselves for California. The winner of the presidential election had tabbed his first cabinet member, naming James Baker as the Secretary of State to be. Baker, longtime friend who had managed the Bush campaign, had served, too, as the Treasury Secretary as well as the White House Chief of Staff. 
Moderate earthquake shook parts of California during the night. It caused little damage, no reported injury. This quake was centered in the region just northeast of San Jose. It could be felt, though, for hundreds of miles along California's northern coast. Officials at the Geological Survey say this one measured four and a half on the Richter scale. Bill, that's a look at it from here. Thanks, Reed. Radio is not what it used to be, especially on the AM dial, where audience share has declined dramatically over the past two decades. For stereo sound, FM can't be beat. So to compete, uh, AM stations across the country are spicing up their programming. Woody Allen recaptured America's love affair with radio in his movie, Radio Days. Pay more attention to your schoolwork and listen to the radio. You always listen to the radio. It's different. Our lives are ruined already. You still have a chance to grow up and be somebody. But with the advent of television, the heyday of radio has waned, especially for AM stations. Last year, advertising sales for AM were $2 billion, but that compares to nearly $5 billion for FM. I think it's a safe assumption that AM is not doing as well as it has in the past, but I think that it's going to rebound. Fifteen years ago, nearly three-quarters of the radio audience listened to AM. But today, industry sources figure only about a third is tuned in. That's because it's more difficult to transmit stereo sound on AM than it is on FM. So lately, AM stations are changing their programming to target a specific audience as a solution. New formats geared to money matters, all news, children and the elderly, just to name a few. Our niche is sports, and uh, uh, not unlike any other format when you're dealing with an adult audience, it takes a while to ga gain their attention and their, and their support. But uh, in just over a year's time, we've come a long way. For uh, maybe that last bastion uh, for men and women who uh, want to just talk about sports because it's not that serious, it's fun. You don't know, you're a schnook. You're just calling up this show. You're a schnook, you don't know. I mean, what the hell do you know? Pete Franklin might insult his listeners, but regardless, he's helping to boost market share for WFAN in New York with his provocative afternoon show. And his isn't the only station that switched to a specialized format. WCVG in Cincinnati is going all the way with Elvis. playing just his 659 singles and asking trivia questions about the late star 24 hours a day. Just to give you an idea about how the industry values AM and FM radio, last year the best price fetched by an AM station was $20 million. It went for WNBC in New York. Well, KVIL, a Dallas FM station, changed hands recently for $82 million. Ahead on Business Day, our personal finance correspondent, Paula Nelson, has a word of warning about home equity loans. Behind every winner, there's a winner. Someone who helped make that victory possible. The Travelers wants you to win. So we back you with independent agents and brokers whose experience and professionalism can help you reach your financial goals. Coach and athlete, your traveler's agent and you. Behind every winner, there's a winner. The traveler, you're better off under the umbrella. In all the world, no one watches TV, loves TV, or is more critical of TV than Americans. So it's not surprising that in a nation of experts, the television of choice comes from the people with nothing less than the most ingenious technology in the industry, RCA. Just one reason more Americans buy RCA video equipment than any other. RCA, number one, with the toughest critics in the world. is 100% real fruit juice. Other drinks are only 10% fruit juice. Kind of makes you wonder, what's the other 90%? Hmm? Juicy juice is a juicier juice. On the left, Tom Brayton. On the right, Pat Buchanan. Get caught up in the crossfire. Tonight at 7.30 Eastern on CNN. When tax reform eliminated over a period of time, deducting interest on personal loans, ever-resourceful taxpayers found a loophole 
or interest is still deductible, home equity loans. But our personal finance correspondent, Paul Nelson, is here to report that many people are putting their primary asset, their home, in peril. Sounds not good, Paula. <laughs> well, this is a little bit for you, Bill. In fact, investors have a lot of options when it comes to borrowing money, but the fact that you can deduct 100% of the interest charges on home equity loans is proving an irresistible lure. But don't let the tax break fool you. Each of the homes on this block presents an opportunity to their owners to use the home equity as the basis of a loan for any purpose, from a winter vacation to financing a child's education. The home equity loan concept offered by most U.S. banks is appealing. Borrow money for typically three percentage points over prime, pay it back in a variety of methods over five to 20 years, and deduct every penny of interest on loans up to $100,000. But abuse and misuse is already apparent with home equity money going into high-risk investments. Everybody saw that everybody else was making money in, in the stock market, and uh, the home equity represented the only available funds or the biggest source of available funds to ride the bull, so to speak. Um, as soon as the market uh, turned drastically in the other direction, we saw an increase in activity of uh, somewhat wealthier people uh, having to take equity out of their home to satisfy margin calls. Another common misuse of home equity lines of credit is debt consolidation loans, where one loan is used to pay off all others. But three or four months later, their credit cards are all clear, and they go out and now incur uh, new debt, um, when now they're carrying double what they normally would have carried had they not taken out the home equity loan. And uh, it, it ultimately has to create a house of cards, so to speak. While no statistics are yet available on mortgage defaults caused by home equity failures, experts suggest that they should only be used for long-term purchases such as home improvements, college education, and medical emergencies. Knowing the terms is essential since the interest on an interest-only $10,000 10-year home equity loan can actually exceed the principal and then end up costing you over $20,000. Thanks, Paula. Today's street fix come from Bernadette Murphy of M. Kimmelman. There are two particular groups that have been very strong here. One of them is the drug group and the other is the baby bells. And in the drug group, I think um, Lily, Merck, Shearing Plow, Syntex, very attractive stocks. And in the baby bell, say Pacific, Telsis, Bell South, Bell Atlantic, that office yields as well, yield as well as price appreciation. Those recommendations of Ms. Murphy of M. Kimmelman, not those of CNN. Now for our world markets update. In London, stock price is slightly higher. Financial Times 100 share index up two. Tokyo prices closed lower. The Nikkei average losing 46. In European trading, the dollar is weaker. Long bond off 230 seconds, yielding 9%. And that is this Thursday edition of Business Day. Thanks for joining us and enjoy your day. If you'd like to give a special gift to a boy or girl eight years old and up, get your pencil ready and write down this number because I've got just the answer for you. It's National Geographic World Magazines, published especially for kids by the National Geographic Society, the same people who produce world-famous National Geographic magazine. It brings real-life adventure, page after page of fascinating articles and pictures in National Geographic color on animals, outdoor adventure and science, sports, hobbies, and crafts. And yet, while it entertains, it fulfills curiosity, stimulates imagination, and encourages your youngsters to read more. It's amazingly inexpensive, only $10.95 for 12 monthly issues in brilliant geographic color. Compare this once a month, 12 times a year gift to a single gift from a toy shop, and you can see what a bargain this is. There's no fuss, no shopping, no wrapping, no shipping. You cannot get it at the newsstand or bookstore. You can only get it through the mail, and it's so easy to order. Just call with your young person's name and address today. Call 1-800-257-1257. That's 1-800-257-1257. Each issue has exciting surprises, puzzles to solve, games they can play with their friends, stories about remarkable kids, and often supersized pullouts to put on the wall. Now, what a marvelous gift for any young person. It pleases while it teaches. And when you call with your subscription order today, we'll also mail a special personalized gift card from you. So call now with your young person's address and your name for the gift card. Call 1-800-257-1257. That's 1-800-257-1257. Twelve colorful issues with exciting games and puzzles, big supersized pullouts, and a card from you.
This gift lasts a year. The benefits may last a lifetime. Business Traveler's Advisory is brought to you by Quality Inns. Make the quality choice at Comfort, Quality, and Clarion Hotels. And by Puffs Plus Facial Tissues, first aid for your sore nose. Good morning, I'm CNN meteorologist Valerie Voss. Here's your Business Traveler's Advisory now for Thursday, November 10th. In the Midwest, we're looking for partly cloudy skies. Chicago airports are reporting 45-minute delays in heavy traffic and possible thunderstorms this morning. In the east, heavy thunderstorms with strong gusty winds will create delays in Cincinnati, while equipment problems create 35-minute delays in Dayton. Gusty winds and approaching thunderstorms will also cause delays in Pittsburgh this morning, and also in Detroit, strong gusty winds and heavy traffic are producing delays. Look for delays with heavy traffic and possible thunderstorms later today in Atlanta and New York, delays this morning also at the Raleigh, Charlotte, Nashville, and Cleveland airports. And in the west, reduced visibilities in drizzle and fog may delay San Francisco travelers by 20 minutes this morning, with one hour delays expected later this afternoon. It's 8 a.m. in the east, 6 a.m. in the mountain. A complete weather update, all the news and sports just ahead on Daybreak. Hello, darlings. I have the most wonderful news for you. If you are a senior citizen, you can get 30% discount at Quality Comfort or Clarion. You know, I really don't know why they asked me to do this. If they wanted somebody older, why didn't they ask one of my sisters? Oh, my word, they're going to kill me. Call 800-221-2222 to reserve a room with a senior's discount at Comfort. Also available at Quality and Clarion. My tissue makes my nose hurt. And it gets red also just from my allergies. Here's first aid for your nose when it's sore from too much blowing. Puffs Plus. Feels like there's something on the tissue. Feels almost like a lotion. Well, I think the great thing is, is that it has lotion and it doesn't smell. Lotion? Oh my gosh. It's the first tissue with moisturizing lotion. Puffs Plus. Puffs Plus save my nose. Puffs Plus feels better on my nose than my other tissue. Our noses have not been sore since the day I started using this product. This is CNN, a network of Turner Broadcasting System. Crystal night, 50 years ago, when the veneer of civilization cracked. An earthquake rattles much of California. And a consumer group calls for a halt to the use of silicone breast implants due to cancer fears. This is Daybreak on CNN for Thursday, November 10th. Today, Britain and Iran say they have agreed to resume full diplomatic relations. Under the agreement reached today in Vienna, an exchange of ambassadors will take place in about six months, but the relationship is restored as of now. Relations were downgraded in 1987 after a British diplomat was beaten up in Tehran, which was the reprisal for Britain's expulsion of an Iranian diplomat for shoplifting. The world paused yesterday to remember a night from 50 years ago when the Nazis of Germany seized on the slaying of a German by a Jew to embark on a night of anti-Semitic violence. Crystal Night, it came to be called, named for the glass of Jewish shops and synagogues that littered the streets of the Third Reich. Last night in Atlanta, Georgia, it became the subject of an oratorio named Stars in the Dust. There are many who recall that night as the mild beginning of what was to come. Came in the door and they looked and they said, Look at that Jewish pig, she has it all ready for us just to smash it up. And I, we knew that everything was going to be broken. And luckily, my mother had the presence of mind to tell them to show them our American visa and to tell them that we are under the protection of the American government. And at that point, the Germans still had respect of the written legal document. So they says, all right, we'll leave her stuff alone. We'll go downstairs to Mrs. Weinstock and smash her stuff. And then somebody called us and told us that the synagogue was burning. The remembrance spans the spectrum of religions. Last night, the bells of St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York tolled out the message. And in West Germany, Crystal Night was remembered also, as Brad White reports from Frankfurt. We'll suffer. Chancellor Helmut Kohl said what happened in Germany 50 years ago is a source of deep shame for his country. Most Germans remained silent on November 9, 1938, 
when Nazi gangs looted Jewish stores and torched synagogues. At least 90 Jews were murdered that night, and 30,000 were dragged off to concentration camps. It was called the Crystal Night because of the glass from shattered windows, and that sound of breaking glass still echoes in many ears. Yeah, I think this is really an issue for the entire human race, and so it's very important, I think, for everyone to uh, remember the lessons of history, the, the very sad lessons, the brutal lessons, as well as the happy lessons. German Jews led their countrymen in a day of atonement. Public officials condemned this horrifying chapter in German history, and Chancellor Kohl found that he was the subject of condemnation. The hecklers condemned Kohl's 1985 visit to the Bitburg War Cemetery with President Reagan. Many in the Jewish community feel the two leaders should not have visited Bitburg since it is the burial site for some of Hitler's SS troops. Kohl also came under fire by a very small group of demonstrators who staged an evening protest in Frankfurt. Some feel he is insensitive to Jewish concerns. Some Germans feel the Crystal Night should be forgotten. They say it's time to look to the future. But most say it must be remembered. As one speaker said, the young people must always guard against the return of indescribable horrors. Brad White, CNN, Frankfurt. The U.S. Air Force is grounding all B-1B bombers until they've been inspected. This after one of the expensive new planes crashed during a training flight from Dias Air Force Base near Abilene, Texas on Tuesday. Before crewmen parachuted to safety, the Air Force will do inspections lasting several hours on each of its 98 bombers. The inspection should be finished within a couple of days. Officials say the grounding order will not interfere with B-1B's readiness for takeoff in the event of a nuclear war. A moderate earthquake hit northern and central California last night. Some windows broke and some goods fell off store shelves, but otherwise there was little damage and no injuries were reported. Experts disagreed on the strength of this quake, placing it between 4.5 and 4.7 on the Richter scale. Former Attorney General John Mitchell, imprisoned for his role in the Watergate scandal for a time, died of a heart attack yesterday. He was 75. Mitchell collapsed while walking on the street near his home in Washington. He had been convicted of perjury and conspiracy for covering up the White House role in the Watergate break-in. Mitchell and Richard Nixon were law partners in New York. When Mr. Nixon was elected president in 1968, he brought Mitchell with him to become attorney general. In his memoirs, Richard Nixon wrote that John Mitchell was one of his few close personal friends. A consumer group is calling on the Food and Drug Administration to stop the use of all silicon gel breast implants immediately. Public Citizen Health Research Group says the implants manufacturer, Dow Corning, knows the implants cause cancer in laboratory rats. Dow Corning says its silicon gel implants are safe. About 130,000 women each year get the silicon gel implants, and the consumer group says they need to be warned about the risks. The FDA started a review of the implants. It will take at least two years. The time is now six minutes past the hour. Just ahead here on Daybreak, the groundwork laid for the transition to a brand new team of people in the White House. And a brand new version of a classic film is aired. It puts Humphrey Bogart in a whole new light. <laughs> but right now, CNN's meteorologist Valerie Voss joins us. Uh, she takes a look at Thursday's forecast. Valerie, good morning. Brian, good morning. Uh, not too many surprises as far as temperatures today. It will be cool over the upper Mississippi River Valley. Temperatures just in the 30s across the Dakotas, all of Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, and the upper peninsula of Michigan. Temperatures a bit milder in the east, 40s over northern Maine, but the rest of New England, the northeast, will go to the 50s today with 60s from just about touching the New York City area. Across the Ohio River Valley, parts of Kentucky and Tennessee, we're also calling for 60s and 70s. And we will see warmer air down across the Gulf Coast, 80s through that region with some 90s in the forecast across Texas. Out across the west, 50s also across Washington and Oregon, 50s and 60s also in uh, most of California, 60s for all of San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, 70s and 80s through the southwest corner of the country. Let's take a look now at our forecast map for later on in the day. A big frontal system in the west, another big frontal system in the eastern part of the country. A frontal system right now is moving across Washington and Oregon, bringing snow to the Cascades, the Siskiyous, Mount Shasta, Lake Tahoe. Snow advisories in effect across all of that region. Strong gusty winds will compound the problem. Snow levels about 6,000 feet for Lake Tahoe, three or 4,000 for the uh, mountains of Oregon and Washington. As the frontal system moves into Montana, Wyoming, by later on today, snow advisories go into effect across parts of Wyoming and Colorado. 
strong gusty winds, as I said, will also accompany this front. It has been very stormy along our second frontal system. Uh, yesterday, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, all saw very heavy thunderstorms, hail, even a tornado reported at Pittsburgh, Kansas. Heavy rains falling today. There's a flash flood watch in effect for the southern half of Michigan. Snow will fall over the northern sections of lower Michigan and the upper peninsula, and we will see rain, thunderstorms, and also strong gusty winds stretching all the way from New England down into the Gulf Coast states by later on today. Also continuing at this hour in an area from Louisiana up into western New York. Here's your forecast now for Thursday for some cities that we hope are close to you. We'll be back in about a half an hour, show you exactly where those thunderstorms are today on our National Radar Summary. Daybreak will be back in just a couple of minutes. Stay with us. Hey, who got, got trouble? How much trouble? So much trouble. Well, now, don't you bow. Just knuckle down and knock on wood. Who's unhappy? Daybreak is brought to you by GMAC the official sponsor of America's Dreams. GM makes the dream. GMAC makes the dream yours. With either financing or smart lease, custom tailored to fit your budget. Right at your GM dealers. The dreams of America. GMAC. Now you've got the red shoes for the walking moment. The new walking shoes. Now you've got the red shoes. They just for you. can walk for miles and your feet won't feel a thing. Easy Spirit. Call now. When your coffee's rich enough for all working day long and it tastes your way, it's necessarily necessary. What is it? Hot grape nuts. The recipe's easy. The result? A savory blend of wholesome wheat and barley, deliciously hearty, uniquely grape nuts. For a great hot taste from an unexpected place, hot grape nut cereal. Stop Saturday morning television from treating you like a child. Honey, they did it to me again. Check CNN and stay informed. Well, not unexpectedly, the Directors Guild is seeing red over the colorization of Ted Turner's uh, black and white classic, not his black and white classic, but the classic, Casablanca. Yeah, like Superstation like TBS aired that colorized version of the 1941 film starring well Humphrey Bogart the last night, and long the long Directors long Guild long says long it is an assault on one of history's long greatest long and most long beloved long motion long pictures. Long and it says long viewers long were seeing a computerized long parody long of the film that put Rick's Cafe on the map. <laughs> Speaking of new. Blue. Blue. Blue shirt. <laughs> blue pink in the cheeks. <laughs> and a new light. Yes. It is. <laughs> 12 minutes past the hour now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good morning, Good Jimmy. Morning. You're in for the sports desk. Speaking of new, you're talking about new faces. Speaking of new indeed. Yeah, we've got a couple. The NBA has only been at work for less than a week now, but already there is talk of a new star emerging. And that talk actually flows into awe when they think of what this one will be when he is joined by David Robinson next year. Willie Anderson, the kid out of Georgia, did it all for San Antonio last night in an easy victory over the new Miami Heat. This alley-oop pass here to Alvin Robertson had new coach Larry Brown excited. After a block by Robertson, the rookie is off and running again. He was on the court all night long. He had 29 points, seven assists, five steals, were just everywhere. And you know that his teammates were enjoying it. In the third, again, it's Alvin Robertson with the feed to Anderson. He makes the nice turnaround jumper. 
And the Spurs are two and one and lead the Midwest. Miami still seeking its first franchise victory. So Anderson is off and flying, but put yourself in the shoes of Celtics number one draft choice, Brian Shaw last night. All he had to do was guard Michael Jordan. And with eyes as big as saucers, Shaw watched the flying Chicago Bulls score 52 points and play defense to the tune of nine steals, just two off the NBA record. Shaw said later he's great on television, but boy, when you have a front row view, he is for real. What makes Jordan's 52 points scary last night is he says the team still has yet to run one single play for him this year. All those points come off broken plays and second options. Meanwhile, out west, the Lakers hung their second straight championship banner and then hung the Denver Nuggets. Byron Scott was one of his best games of his career, running the Laker break, scoring a game-high 33, doing it all as the Lakers won by 18, up their record to 3-1 and one on this young season. Let's roll through all of last night's scoreboard now. Frank Viola of the Minnesota Twins turned his 24-7 record into a Cy Young trophy last night. One vote shy of being a unanimous choice. He had one of those kind of years that pitchers dream of with attending nightmares. He was 24-7 with a 2.62 earned run average. But his team could not repeat as division winners. So the Cy Young was still a bit of a surprise to him. I put the numbers up this year. I did the best job I could. And it was out of my control after that as far as the voters were, go uh, were concerned. And I think it was more of a surprise to me because I wasn't overly worried about what the voting was going to lead to and when I got the call from uh, Jack Lang today I was just ecstatic and uh, I'm still on cloud nine. The National League version today any bets on Oral Hershiser more next half hour including a commentary on coaching innards. I'm Jim Huber with more news back to DC and Reed Collins. Well the president to be George Bush is going to be resting up from the long campaign beginning this afternoon and he'll spend the next four days in Florida fishing. Bush and his wife were joined by the quails yesterday for a little tour of the White House conducted by the current occupants, the Reagans. Bush says he'll spend part of the vacation formulating his own administration. Yesterday, he named the campaign chairman, James Baker, his choice to become Secretary of State. Baker had been President Reagan's Secretary of the Treasury and Chief of Staff, you know. Bush made appointments for the transition team, too, said though naming more cabinet positions will not come until after the trip to Florida. Michael Dukakis was back on the job yesterday morning, but, of course, not the job he was hoping for. The Massachusetts governor showed up at his office to take care of some state business. Dukakis later told reporters that the negative tone at the campaign set a bad precedent for future races. But he said he did not feel bitter toward Bush, and he was ready with a quip when a reporter asked him how he felt about Bush's choice for Secretary of State. The man who directed the campaign, James Baker, that you call the sleaziest campaign that you can remember was named today by Mr. Bush to be a Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. What does that say? What's your reaction to that? I believe in the redemption of souls, Joe. <laughs> Dukakis didn't say if he would consider another presidential bid or if he would run for a fourth gubernatorial term in 1990. Well, some politicians are breathing a sigh of relief after this exhausting 88 presidential campaign, but Jesse Jackson seems to be getting a second wind for the 1992 election. And CNN's Jeff Flock has the story. Jesse Jackson says he did all he could to get Michael Dukakis elected. People who need justice yeah. are the vote Dukakis. By his own account, Jackson trekked 60,000 miles through 75 cities in 30 states for the Dukakis-Benson ticket, talking himself force in a whirlwind weekend windup. I have traveled more miles, spoken to more people, registered more voters, and spoken in more places than any other Democrat. But it is no secret that Jackson was unhappy with the way he was handled by the Dukakis campaign. And in an interview with CNN, Jackson lamented that Dukakis was too late in taking Jackson's advice to roll up his sleeves and defend the liberal democratic tradition. When you agree to support someone, you have to support them uh, advisedly. 
and let them accept what they will accept when they will accept it. Jackson was the number two vote getter in the 1988 Democratic primaries. In some eyes, that makes him the early front runner for the 1992 campaign. Looking ahead to 1992, I know you're going to tell me it's too early, but you're, it not, is. you're not ready to rule that out. Though. Of course not, but it's, it's, it's certainly premature. People have had their feel <clears throat> of presence in politics in 1988. I certainly have. For now, perhaps. But few doubt that he intends to be a presidential candidate again. Ahead in the near term for Jackson, gaining control of more of the Democratic Party apparatus, registering more voters, and answering questions about his presidential plan. I have not yet made the decision, not even given it serious consideration. Unlikely for Jackson is a run for any other office between now and 1992. Jackson has ruled out a try for mayor in Chicago in this winter's upcoming election. He is a man who apparently has his eye on just one political office. I'm Jeff Fox, CNN, in Chicago. Announcing a dramatic breakthrough in shaving technology. The new Remington Microscreen Ultimate shaves as close as a blade.